I'm trying to pack and I'm fucking stressed. Do you want to know why? I probably need to bleep out the fucking because I don't want to get demonetized. Um, Henry's deciding that we're taking the one car that doesn't have a proper boot or a trunk. It has a frunk, which means we can only take soft luggage. Have you ever tried to pack two weeks of clothes, shoes, beauty products, basically your whole life in soft bags? Anyway, going to start with the rhubarb stuff and let's see what we've laid out on the bed. So, practical stuff. We have this portable water bottle, which is really useful. You turn this inside out and it turns into a bowl, so that's good. Um, we're also taking her little Lululemon rucksack so that she has stuff. Because there'll be days when we go walking and, you know, it's important. She's got to have her stuff too. And then we also have this, uh, the Shamo, I guess this is a water or food. Maybe it's water. Anyway, useful to put stuff in. So this is the practical stuff. I think we should probably pack her smart collar too. I need to find that. So we've got a ball, but I think I'm going to take some of her toys that she finds a little bit more comforting. Um, brush, her very nice jumper and her matching sham coat. I think we could do a bit better on the clothing. I mean, I'm not exaggerating when I say this whole, I mean, excuse the stage of this room. We're just using this room to pack. Um, this whole bag is filled with rhubarb stuff. So I need to go through it and see if there's anything that we're missing. Anyway, obviously we're gonna pack food and treats, but spare poo bags, very easy to forget. A towel to dry her down after we've been to the beach. These ones are great. Uh, they're microfiber and they do the job really well. And then this was the cutest thing ever. It's a cooling mat in the shape of a watermelon. So you put that in the fridge or the freezer the liquid inside goes hard and cold, and then when your dog's feeling a little hot, they can come and sit on it and they can cool down. Like this dog has way too much stuff. I'm kind of thinking, I mean, I personally think this little pink stripy jumper is saying south of France, I don't know about you. But then it's also gonna be hot, so do we even bother taking clothes for her? I think we just need coats for either the evenings or for when we go to the beach beach. Um, Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. Anyway, that's most of rhubarb stuff that we're taking. So I'm trying to pack and think logically about this. And if anybody knows me in real life, you'll know that this is just not my strong, it's not my strongest skill set. Um, so I've got one massive tan duffel bag that I've stolen from Henry, which I think all of my clothes are gonna go in, just rolled up. It's in this corner, it's looking very full and I don't have all my clothes in there yet, so. Anyway, that's my current dilemma. Um, I'm unwashed and unmade up. I've had my eyebrows done. I've had my lashes lifted. And I've had my nails done today. And surprisingly, all of that took close to four hours, which is insane, but... Okay, so I think so far so good. I know what I'm doing. I just need to execute on what I said I'm gonna do. So let's see how that goes. Okay, where are we going? We are on our way to South France. Okay, via where? Like, what, we where are, are we currently? We are, okay, we're currently in London and we are on our way down to Folkestone to get the Euro Tunnel, And then we're gonna stay in a hotel uh, about an hour away from Paris. And then tomorrow, we're driving all the way down to Antibes. Why is it all the way down? How far is because that? Because it's the big push down to Antibes. Why is it the big push? Because, because driving through mainland France is boring and the only places you want to be are the north and south France. So, yes. Well done do for it. offending everybody who lives in the other bits of so we're, France. We're going to do it in one, one, one big push. Well, I mean, staying in north of France and then doing one.
but this is actually this is the day. This is the day we we get stuck in a car all day. It's always warm with a road trip, and, and this is that day. And we're currently being actually we need to slow down a bit because we're going to get a Ferrari whiz past you at 100 miles an hour. I don't care. Henry is in this imaginary convoy boy race with hey, a big stranger in a it's, Ferrari. It's duty faller, so because and he's been overtaking me all day because they've been overtaking each other for the last 10 minutes. They uh, Henry now thinks they're friends. It's an imaginary race. We are friends, although my short tank is bigger than his. But okay. no, I've got more range than he does. Yeah, I have to make the disclaimer that Rhubarb is strapped in. Her car seat is seat belted in, and then she is plugged into this. Okay, yeah. this. So yeah, her uh, her car seat is strapped around the rear seats, so it's like locked in. Yeah. And, and then she's plugged into the seat herself. And then she's just lying on top of my luggage. Um, oh my god. Oh god. about what the hell's been going on. We've just come back from the longest, make sure you can't see my boobs. Um, we just came back from the longest day in Monaco. So we thought, you know what, the F1's on, it'll be so much fun to just get down there and see what's going on. And we debated driving versus not. And our friends who know the area said, don't drive, it's the most stupid thing you could do. Get the train. And we're like, okay, the train. Hi, Rebob, you got to say hi. You see what's going on here? Um, Come on. Oh, oh she's bugged up. Um, and we're like, okay, the train's cheap. It's only an hour. It can't be that bad. We were expecting it to be busy, but not as busy as it was. So we got in quite early in the morning. And when I tell you, it was like rush hour on crack. And on top of that, people were angry as hell. So I've never heard so many fights break out. And it was a combination of shouting in French and English. Someone stepped on a child. Somebody pushed somebody out the way. I mean, at every station, you could see the chaos ensue because we got on quite early on the train journey and you could see um, every time the doors opened at a new station, the people on the platform were going crazy. The guys nearest to us on the, at the door were just refusing to let people on. So you could see people running up and down and screaming at each other. So anyway, we get on this train and so much chaos ensues that our, our journey slowly becomes an hour and a half to two hours. We are two stops away from Monaco 
and the train comes to a halt and they say, yeah, there's going to be a delay of about an hour and a half, two hours because there's been an accident at the station in front of us. And we're going, Jesus fucking Christ. It's also midday, so it's piping hot. And they stop us at uh, Villefranche Summer. Really stunning, really gorgeous. Like there are worse places to be stranded. It was so pretty. So we all get off and chaos just ensues because you've got a whole train of people now trying to find taxis to Monaco, trying to get a boat to Monaco, trying to find water taxis. So we go down, we're trying to find a taxi rank. Obviously everybody, no one is very English about this. There's no orderly queue. People are just finding taxis in the street. They don't care how long you've been there. They're just running up to the nearest car and going, fucking let me in. We said, you know, a water taxi, a boat, whatever must take us to Monaco. We find somewhere and they say, yeah, no dog's so sorry because they privately charter the boat. I don't know the story. Basically, they wouldn't let Rhubarb on, so we thought like, oh. So at that point, we were like, fuck, what do we do? We tried to get another taxi. We were at the taxi run before everyone else. I mean, not a stereotype, but we were near the most annoying, loud Americans who were just, basically, they just had no manners, okay? It really upset me. They basically sat on me when we got onto the bench. They didn't even ask me to move up. And then they were just butting in front of people, flagging, ca uh, flagging taxis down. Not enough time had passed at this point where I thought, I reckon if we got back onto the train, our original train would still be there and it would be ready to move. So we kind of strolled back. We were like, let's get a little bit of ice cream. Let's have an ice cream break. Got some sorbet. Obviously, get her up some water, had a little walk, give her a little play. And then we headed back and we saw our train was still there. But obviously, because everyone had cleared off, it was empty. It was perfect. You could feel the air con. We got back on, we got seats. Within 20 minutes, the train moved. And then we were, I think, it took 10 minutes to get to Monaco from there. So that kind of worked out for us. I was so glad we got back on that train because I couldn't deal with people trying to charge a few hundred euros to get us basically 10 minutes down the road. Um, we got to Monaco and obviously it was heaving because of the F1, it was absolute chaos, but the atmosphere was amazing though. So buzzy, so cool, really good people watching, but it was impossible to find anywhere. Even if you weren't near the track, it was impossible to find anywhere just to sit and have a drink and some food. We found somewhere. It was opposite a second-hand pre-loved designer shop, so obviously I went shopping there after we had lunch. And I found a Missoni headband and a cute little poochie top, which I will probably show in a later bit of the video because I want to wear it in Italy, for an absolute steal. I think I got both for £160 or something, which is crazy considering a Missoni headband would set you back nearly £400 and a poochie top, God knows how much, because it has all like these gems encrusted on it. Um, it's quite... It's quite Y2K, I like it. So we did a bit of shopping and then we were walking to various vantage points where you could kind of see the cars, but so many of these bars take the absolute piss. There was a place right next to the track, kind of. Basically, we were trying to look for somewhere even to stream it on a screen because we have UK iPads and phones, so we couldn't stream anything because we were in Monaco. We were just trying to find a bar to watch the fucking F1 on. We could hear it. It was so loud. At one point we were crossing the track and you could feel the ground shake beneath you. The place was saying it's 400 euros per person just to get in. You're going to charge us 800 euros just to sit down. You can get fucked. We scrapped that idea. We found a little wine bar um, kind of kind of next to the track. You couldn't see, but you could definitely hear it. So we had some wine and some crisps and then we thought, the F1 is going to end probably in about 20 minutes. It's going to be absolute hell getting back on that train. So we got the early train back. Luckily, we got seats. It was a seamless journey. We made it home. And it's our last night now on Antibes. So we need to go and pack everything up because tomorrow we are driving to Els for our next location. So yeah, that's kind of what's happened today. Um, yesterday, we had a really nice beach day. We went to the Cap d'Antibes Beach Hotel. That's what it's called. And the beach club, super nice. It's very Wes Anderson, very baby pink. We were sat next to Alex Pettifer, which was kind of a blast from the past, kind of fun. But the staff was so accommodating. Everyone was so friendly. They were great with rhubarb. Um, I cannot recommend it more. If you want somewhere in Antibes to spend the whole day just basically in luxury by the beach, get to the Cap Antibes Beach Hotel because the beach club is so good. I'd say reserve if you can, we didn't. So we went in to have lunch, still outside, still gorgeous. And they said they were booked for the day, but they were super nice and then ended up finding us two sun loungers. I think it was 40 euros each to lie out for the day. Um, 
really good food and really good drink. So yeah, that's kind of been what's been going on the last two days. I think the next time I see you guys, it'll be when we are in Ennis.